In this episode, we're talking all about masking and how you can combine masking and keyframe animation to create some really awesome effects inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. So let's get into it. So first of all, the question that I need to ask is what is masking? Essentially, masking is just basically a way of cropping out specific parts of your videos. Now, you can use masking for many different applications. You can use masking for cropping your videos, adding some split screen animation. You can use it to animate some effects over time, or there's so many other ways that you can use masking in Premiere Pro. So let's jump into Premiere and have a look at how masking works. So we've got this video clip on our timeline and in order to create a mask, we first need to go over into the effect controls window into motion and then under motion we've got opacity and under opacity we've got an ellipse mask a four point polygon mask or a rectangle mask and then we've got a free draw bezier which is basically your pen tool so with this layer selected you just want to go ahead and select the ellipse mask to begin with so we'll just create a circle and as you can see that has made a circle in the center of the video and cropped everything else out of that mask so this mask is made up of four points and you can move the position of any one of these points so if you were to create a vignette using masking all you would have to do is just move these points to the edge of the frame and then if we go over into opacity mask one you can see we've got mask path and this is just basically the path of the mask so if i was to move this this is adjusting the mask path that means if I was to create an animation using this technique, I would create a brand new keyframe on mask path, go a second in, I would move the mask path over. And then when I play this back, you can see that mask is moving over time like so. But we don't want to do that. We want to create a vignette using this mask. So we'll go down to mask feather and we'll increase the feathering all the way up. So the feathering is basically just the softness or the blending of it. So if it's at zero, you get this really hard edge, as you can see. And if you pull this all the way up to, let's go 400, we get this really soft edge, which creates this soft vignette effect. Now we'll pull this down for the sake of this tutorial. We'll pull this down to around, let's go to 100. Next up, we've got mask opacity and pulling this down is just going to remove that mask. And then you've got mask expansion. So if we take this to the right and go to a plus number, it's going to expand that mask outwards. But if we take this to a negative number, it will shrink the mask inward. So it's going to shrink this. So as you can see, you can use this to create a blinking effect. So you could do a nice point of view blinking effect using the mask expansion as the motivator for this. So that is our circle mask or an ellipse mask. Let's get rid of that. And we'll go to the four point polygon mask or a rectangle mask. And as you can see, that has created a rectangle mask on our video and all of these settings are the same. So we'll just delete that. And we'll move on to the free draw bezier or the pen tool. Now this is the one that is the most interesting because you can do pretty much whatever you like. So that means you can create a mask around a specific object. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to select this tree on the left. So I'm going to zoom out and I'm just going to draw a mask around the left side of the frame, like so. Now, as you see, that has deleted everything that isn't there, but in order to just affect this specific part of the video, you just want to make a copy of that. So we'll hold option, drag that up. We'll go to video layer one and delete that mask. And now basically we can adjust this area on the left that the mask is surrounding only and not affect the rest of the frame. So I'm going to go into effects, We'll search for, let's go change color. So change to color. We'll go from, we'll use this eyedropper tool to select a specific color in the frame. So let's select that pink. So you've got a pink here, we'll select that. And then we'll change this to, and we'll push that towards the greens. As you can see, that's changing that pink and turning it into green. Of course, you're more than welcome to change the hue. You can change the lightness, the saturation, the softness. It's all completely up to you. But as you can see, because we've got this mask, only this part of the image that's in the mask is affected. The problem is though, we are getting a cut off. As you can see, if I zoom in, I zoom into 150, you can really see it cutting off here and that makes the effect look a bit weird. 
So you can increase the mask feathering to blend that. And that's just going to soften that and make that seem a lot more seamless. So as you could imagine, creating this mask around this side of the frame is really useful for specific color grading, applying effects to only part of a frame and so many other different applications. Now let's just delete that mask. Let's go, let's delete the change to color as well. What we're gonna do now is we're just going to create a few different masks on this same video. I'm gonna keep this layer here, but I'm just gonna turn it off for now. And we'll go to video layer two, so that's this one here. And we'll just create a few different masks. So we'll go create ellipse mask and we'll move that up. We'll create a rectangle mask. And then we'll go to the free draw bezier to create another shape as well. So we'll do a triangle. So as you can see, we've got three shapes and that's all on the same layer. And you've got mask one, which is the circle. So you can adjust the feathering, the opacity and the expansion of this layer on its own. Got mask two, that is the rectangle. Again, you can increase the feathering and it will only affect the rectangle. And then you've got mask three, which is down here. Now, if I turn the original background layer back on, if I drop an effect onto this specific layer here, so the one with the masks, let's search for a black and white effect. If we drop that on the mask layer, you can see only these parts, these, these masks, only these sections are now black and white. And of course you can even enhance that by going into levels and increasing the contrast. You can really see those shape layers coming through. Now that's all well and good just adding random shapes onto our footage or doing specific color correction, but why would you actually use masking in your projects? Well, masking is useful for many different reasons. And one of the reasons why I personally love it is because one, you can do specific color grading. So if I wanted to only affect the sky, I would just create a mask around the sky, select the color of the sky, and then I just change the color and only the area that was in the mask would change. It's also really handy as well if you wanted to create a split screen effect. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna drop a few different clips onto the timeline. So we'll drop a clip over here and we'll drop another clip onto video layer three. So we've got three video clips. I'm just going to change the scale of these down. So we'll pull these down to 50. There you go, like so. So we've got our footage on video layer three, one on video layer two, and one on video layer one. So we're gonna to go to video layer three. We'll zoom out a little bit. So we'll zoom out to 50. We'll go into opacity on video layer three. We'll select the free draw bezier, and we'll just create a mask around the right side of the frame and we'll pull the mask feather down to zero. Now we'll go to video layer two, and we'll just go ahead and we'll draw another mask, like so. Of course, feel free to move this if you want to, and we'll pull the feather down to zero. Then we'll go to video layer one, and again, we'll go to opacity, free draw bezier, and we'll just create a mask around the left side of the frame. Now that was a little bit rushed, but you can see what is possible using masking with this split screen effect. And the great thing is when you combine this specific effect using masking with keyframe animation, you can create an animated split screen effect using the following techniques. So we'll go to the very beginning. We'll go to mask one, mask path, create a brand new keyframe by selecting toggle animation. We'll go to video layer two, create another keyframe on mask path and we'll go to video layer one. And again, we'll create a new keyframe on mask path. Now we'll scroll towards the end. We'll select mask one, we'll zoom out again, and then we'll just move the position of this mask over to the right. So I'm just gonna move this bottom right point over. So around here. Now we'll go to video layer two and at that same point in time, we'll select mask one and we'll move this bottom left point over to the right and we'll move the top right point over to the left like so. Then we'll go to video layer three, go mask path at the same point and we'll move this top left point over to the left. So if we zoom back into fit and we play this back, you can see that this split screen animation is going to animate over time. There you go, that looks really awesome. Now, if you wanted to add new points onto your mask, then you absolutely can do. All you have to do is just go over to the mask. So we'll go to mask one. So if you hover over that blue line, you'll see the free draw bezier tool or the pen tool appear, and that is going to create a new point. So if you select that, that will create a new point which you can then move. Of course, if you hold onto this, 
So if you create a point and hold on, so if you hold on and then drag it across to the side, you'll notice that you can add a curve. Now you can adjust the value of this curve by pulling up these two lines. So if you wanted to expand that, you can just increase the size of these lines. Or if you wanted this to be more of a harsher angle, then you can just decrease the size and that will be a more harsh angle. But that is how you create a curve on your mask and add a new point onto your mask. As an added extra, I'm going to talk about alpha mats and luma mats inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now alpha mats and luma mats are a great way of combining two video clips into one. One runs through a transparent video and one runs through a white layer. I'm going to show you the differences and how you can use them with different layers inside of Premiere. So we're going to start with an alpha mat. So we're going to first begin by creating a new title. So we'll go file, new, legacy title. We'll press OK on this window and we'll just type out a word, a phrase, just anything of your choice here. So we'll do AE juice, we'll change the font of this, we'll increase the size make this heavier using this weight tool here, this bold tool, and we'll make this white. Now we'll just go into the project tab and import that title. We'll drag that onto video layer two. And then from here, we want to go into effects and search for the track matte key. So that should be the track matte key. It should be under keying and we want to drop that onto our video layer on video layer one. So not the title on the video. Then from there, we want to change the mat to video two. And as you can see, if you've got the composite using mat alpha, you can see the video is now in that text. So we can increase the scale. So let's go 150. We can pull the position down. At the moment, we've got this transparency grid behind this title. So if we turn this transparency grid off, you can see you've got this black video underneath and then you've got the video appearing within the text. And that is because we are using this track mat key, this alpha mat on our video. Now I'm just going to delete the track mat key for now. We're going to get rid of that title and I'm going to show you how to use a luma mat. So I'm just going to create something for this tutorial. We'll go file, new, legacy title, press OK. We want to make sure there is a black background here. So turn this background layer on. So the background is selected. We've got a solid color of black and then we can just go ahead and create a shape layer here. So let's go for an ellipse tool down the middle and make sure this is white. You can see the fill color over here is selected and this is white. We'll exit out of here and we'll just drop this onto video layer two. Now from here, you want to go back into effects, drop the track matte key onto our video. So our video on video layer one, and again, we'll change the mat to video two. But instead of the mat being mat alpha, we want to select mat luma. And that's going to place that video within that white ellipse. Now, it doesn't have to be a shape layer that you've just created. If you had a video overlay or a split screen film mat or something in the foreground on video layer two, you can use the track mat key and the luma mat to merge these two clips together to make your video appear in the white part of the video. Alpha mat, luma mat, and the track mat key in general are a great way of combining two videos together to create really awesome and interesting effects inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Now, like I've said, masking has many different applications and uses inside of Adobe Premiere Pro and understanding how to mask and animate that mask over time is going to enable you to unlock so many new features and effects moving forward in the future. In the next episode, I'm talking all about time, more specifically, how to handle different frame rates, how to import and edit time lapses, and also how to create a speed ramp effect.